Welcome back. You're definitely watching Sunrise Entertainment. And of course, I have Duele in studio, like I told you, if you're a fan of Neo Soul. And before we come back to him, let's take a look at one of his videos. That was Dwellers' video, One Prophet, and he's having a lot of fun in studio right now, singing to his own song. <laughs> Hi, Dwellers. How are you? Doing? How are you? I'm fine. Welcome to Kenya, Karibu, Kenya. Thank you. Are you? How are you feeling the home mood being in Kenya right now? I'm enjoying it. Uh -huh. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I got a chance to hang out yesterday, mm -hmm. see a little bit of the city. Forty minutes of sleep. Forty minutes of sleep. Wow. All the forty minutes. You don't look like forty minutes of sleep. Hey, I feel it. Well, thank <laughs> you, though. Thank you. Okay, so now tell me, um, you, I was reading um, your bio and you were saying how you lost your dad at 10 years old and that's how you drew inspiration for your music. Do you still do that up to today? Um, I think now music, uh, well, I, I got into it back then, you know, because uh, it was sort of like my medicine for me. I was a quiet kid and I felt like there were things I, I didn't feel comfortable talking to people about. Mm -hmm. So when I had these type of emotions, I, I learned how to put them into music okay. and put them into lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, today, it still kind of works that way. Um, I've learned, it's, music has become my everyday, so I've okay. learned to put you know, my emotions into music. And mm -hmm. of course, you know, when it comes more, more so when it comes to writing, you know, mm -hmm. I like to, like to kind of document my life you know, mm -hmm. in my songs and my music. Okay. Yeah. So everything in terms of your music, when it comes to lyrics, it's everything to do with your life? Does it have just majority, fiction ma or...? Majority of it has to do with my life. Sometimes I write um, you know, about situations that I've been in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I write about situations that I see my friends going through. Okay. And sometimes I write from an aspect of a situation that I want to be in. Mm -hmm. you know, so it keeps things fresh and, mm -hmm. and it mixes it up a little bit. Okay. From selling music <laughs> at the back of your car, at the boot of your car, yeah. to where you are today. Tell me about um, back then how it was for you until the label that signed you and what drove you to say, you know what, even though I'm selling at the back of my car, mm. things are going to look up for me. You know what, when I was doing music, um, when, I, when I was selling it out of, out of the trunk of the car, it was just more so I wanted to put it out there to see what people felt yeah. about my music. You know, okay. my friends and my family kind of put me up to it because yeah. I always did music just mm -hmm. for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, so so I put it out and, and people kind of gravitated towards it. And through that, I met, you know, Slum Village. They introduced me to their mm -hmm. management mm -hmm. and they took the project and shopped it at a few different labels. That's how mm -hmm. I ended up with Virgin. Mm -hmm. That was in 2000. I worked with Slum Village on Tainted in mm -hmm. 2001, I believe it was. And Two years later, I put out my first album, which was yeah. Subject, okay. and now we're here five albums later. Wow. And it's a blessing. Yeah. I feel good, mm -hmm. and I'm in Kenya. Wow. What? <laughs> five years down the line, do you, do you feel like you would do anything different in your life, personal or professional? No. 
Mm -hmm. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't change anything. I like where I am right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me about some kinda. Some kinda. The album Some Kinda. I felt like that album was more so jazz. It had more of a jazz feel to it. Okay. Subject was more soulful. Mm -hmm. Some Kinda <laughs> was more jazz. The album after that, which was Sketches of a Man, mm -hmm. was a little more. It had more of a mixtape feel. Mm -hmm. After that was Once World Women. That was just me being all over the place. Mm -hmm. And the latest album, which is Greater Than One, yeah. this is like a, a combination of everything. Mm -hmm. But I hear a lot of people relating Greater Than One to the first two albums, Subject yeah. and Some Kinda. Uh -huh. yeah. So tell me about um, Dwelle in 2013. And what was the biggest, what, is, what would be your biggest, what has been your biggest rather highlight in your career? And oh, yeah. what are you planning for 2013? <laughs> Uh, 2013 has big <laughs> has big shoes mm -hmm. to fill. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a, I've had a lot of highlights, you know, mm -hmm. in my career. Yeah. Um, I'll say one of my fondest memories would be uh, playing the Montreux Jazz Festival mm -hmm. in Switzerland. Roy Ayers, which is one of my idols, I grew up listening yeah. to him. He came up and performed after me, and he called me out to help him sing "Everybody Loves the Sunshine," and that was like one of my <laughs> favorite songs ever. Yes. And I was young, I was brand new in the industry then, and it kind of scared me, I'm not gonna lie. I got up on stage, I wasn't ready. I sang the song, I got halfway through the song, and I just stopped everything, and I was like, man, you are the best. I can't believe this, I can't believe this is happening. Yeah. And everybody was like, oh, he's so young. And I was definitely young and scared. Yeah. yeah. So tell me, Dwale, um, music has been actually your whole life. Do you have a ritual that you always do as Dwele? Maybe before you record or before you perform, is there a certain ritual like probably you need to do yoga or I don't know, just eat a lot of food or <laughs> do, just jog? What do you do? Do you have a ritual that you have that guys don't know you have um, before you record? We always, you know, as a band, mm -hmm. we, always, we always pray mm -hmm. before a show. Mm -hmm. uh, ginger root, I chew raw ginger root. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of mm -hmm. kind of center myself, kind of like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. get into my own, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the ritual happens more, more so before a show than before recording the album. Okay. Yeah. Guys, let's look at another video for Dwelly before we come back to him. Check this out. Tell me about that one. What's Not to Love. Yes. I worked with Mike City on that song. Okay. That was three years ago? Mm -hmm. Four years ago, I think. Wow. Yeah. And still, you know, guys, you know, I was doing research and I'm asking guys, so what are some of your favorite songs that Dwelle has done? Guys are like, What's Not to Love? Really? What was your whole um, thought process when you were doing that song? When you were that song right there was easy for me because mm -hmm. I, I worked with Mike City. It mm -hmm. was just a matter of going into the studio, mm -hmm. hearing the beat, hearing the actual song, mm -hmm. and saying, yeah, it feels good, and just going in and, and putting my instrument on it. Mm -hmm. So that one was not a lot of work for me. Okay. Yeah. Do you ever get used to the whole celebrity life? Get used to it? Mm. Do you ever get used to it? Like, I don't ever want to get used to it. Yeah. I don't want to wake up and feel like 
mm -hmm. I need uh, people to ask me for a picture, uh -huh. you know, for me to feel uh -huh. important. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Most embarrassing moment that you oh, can remember. Most embarrassing moment. There's so many. There's so many to choose from. That you woke, that you were there after it happened, you're like, oh, wow. Like, I was wow. once in London. Yeah. Um, playing at a place called Jazz Cafe. Mm -hmm. And the way the stage is set up, you got your stage. Okay. You got your audience, <laughs> yeah. and then there's a staircase that goes up to an upper balcony yeah. with people kind of like looking over the upper balcony. Yeah. So we had finished the set, I walked up the stairs, and we stopped right there because they were calling for an encore. Okay. While they were calling for an encore, there was a girl that was hugging on me, right? Yeah. And she's like, oh my God, oh my God, I love you, I love you. I said, oh, thank you. Love you too. So <laughs> I'm trying to get back down yeah. the steps for the encore. She won't let me go. So I finally got away from her. She grabs onto my leg. And so she's holding my leg. My manager's pulling on her. I'm yeah. pulling away from her at the same time. And I pull and I trip down like four or five steps in front of the whole audience. They're like, oh. And I was like, don't tell nobody. It's this not was, like the whole crowd like goes before, like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was like before Twitter, Facebook, and all of that, thankfully. You lucky man. Yeah. Lucky man. And he's at The Real Dweller on Twitter, if you guys are interested to know. So tell me something that no one knows about you. Hmm. Something no one knows about me. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm more than music. I like doing uh, anything that has to do with expression, mm -hmm. whether that's uh, photography, videography, mm -hmm. um, painting, sketching. Yeah. You know, I, I dabble in like all of that. Oh, you're the whole mushy one. Mushy? Mushy. The whole sweet, um, I don't if know, can you use the word mushy? If you want to call me sweet, that's cool. I'll take <laughs> Look at him all bragging. So guys wanted me to ask. I think the ladies wanted me to ask. Mm. Um, so what should guys expect from you this Sunday? Should, are you looking forward for any proposals or such like? Sure, I'm accepting, from ladies? I'm, I'm accepting proposals, <laughs> uh, applications. Uh -huh. um, it's going to be a lot of fun, you know, yeah. with the live show. No mm -hmm. matter what size of crowd, I always mm -hmm. try to make it an intimate, yeah. you know, performance. Um, so that's what it's going to be. You know, I'm going to do some older songs, a few newer songs. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I'm going to try to cover all the bases. I'm going to give you something to dance to, something to move to, yeah. move to. You know? can't wait. Yeah. So how did you come up with all this? So you decided, you know, I'm going to come to Kenya. So what was the whole um, process that pieced together this event uh, for this is, that's, We would have to get my manager up here mm -hmm. to talk about that. Mm -hmm. You know, he was the one that made it all happen. Mm -hmm. You know, um, connecting with the right people to make it happen. Okay. Yeah. I call this the quick fire round where you, I get to ask you a question, you don't have time to answer. There's no, there's no full posing and saying, let me think about it. I'm scared. Okay. It's just, just random. Okay. Favorite color? Favorite color? No thinking, no thinking. Gray. Okay, start. Favorite color? Gray. Last time we changed your toothbrush? Uh, Afro three, or cornrows? Three, three weeks ago. Oh my God. Afro. <laughs> Afro or cornrows? Afro. Last time you cried? Three months? Three, four months? Tell us about that. I think it was a movie. It was a movie. It wasn't even a part worth crying over, and I just, I don't know. It just needed to come out of me, so it came out. <laughs> the bush or the beach? Whoa, whoa, what? The bush or the beach? No, like vacation. The bush. <laughs> the, the, the bush? The bush or the beach? What is the bush? The bush. If you want to have a vacation, would you prefer being in the wild? The bush. Or oh. at the beach? See, we don't, have, we don't have the wild in the States. Damn. So I'm going to say the wild, because I've never done it. And I have done the beach. Interesting. Mini skirt or shorts? The mini skirt. Good. On you, right? Not me. <laughs> on you? Of course, on the girl. Yeah, mini skirt. <laughs> oh, dwellers. So, guys should expect, just give us one more time what guys should expect on Sunday. Because there are a lot of guys watching right now. Mm. Dweller fans. Dweller fans. Tell just, them. Just the guys? No. Everybody. Ladies, everyone, oh, in general. Everybody in general. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just going to be a great time. Come to. Camera two, it's going to be a great time. Make sure you bring your dancing shoes. You never know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I got to keep it interesting for myself. Yes, you, you do. You know, so it's going to be a good time. I'm going to make sure of that. Okay. Definitely. Small performance, just for me. Uh -huh. For like 10 seconds, <clears throat> just, just something small. So I guess um, to know what I know. Let me see. Give me a finger snap. I'll go old school. It used to be, we would be the best of all friends. It turned to be L-O-V-E, I was your man, and you was my lady friend. We spent time, I found a way to be by your side, 
do the ins and outs and rolls and rights. All right, that's it. <laughs> I was really getting into it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Duelo for you. He's going to be performing at the Blankets and Wine this Sunday. And you know, that's one of the events that you always mark on your calendar. So be, sh be sure to be at the Blankets and Wine Festival on Sunday. And he's saying, you know, you best be there. He's going to bring it down. And of course, I'm going to hand you over to the band. Kipawa Band is um, in the other studio waiting to perform. But let's take a look at his video one more time. Substance, you're not shallow at all. For I was weak and sitting tall. Yeah. I'm just about anything from A to Z. It's crazy how you relate to me. Oh, girl, with you, I can always be myself. It's something that I'm never. you 